Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Before I proceed, I would like to acknowledge uh, the uh, permission granted by uh, Dr. Vinay Kumar for uh, using the images from Robinson uh, Kutran, Pathologic Basis of Disease. His support for this uh, educational endeavor is inspirational. Uh, to uh, uh, look at the pathological aspect of rheumatoid arthritis, uh, we will uh, Proceed first with the etiological aspects, then immunology, etiopathogenesis, morphology, clinical manifestations, radiology and uh, laboratory features, diagnostic criteria and complications. Rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic autoimmune disorder mainly affecting the joints as the name suggests arthritis that is inflammation of the joint. So, what happens here? Here in uh, this condition there is synovitis which is non-separative, proliferative and inflammatory. It is an inflammatory process which starts the whole um, uh, uh, manifestations of rheumatoid arthritis and this finally leads to article cartilage destruction and as a response there is fibrosing and finally bony ankylosis and therefore fusion of the joint. Extra articular manifestations are also seen as rheumatoid nodules specifically in the skin then it can also affect the respiratory and cardiovascular system and thereby proceeding to manifestations of the same. It is more often seen in females with a ratio of 3 to 1 as compared to males and in the age group of 20 to 40 years. Pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis, it is basically an autoimmune response. Most importantly, it is a CD4 uh, T cell response, that is a T helper cell response. So, what happens in this? Now, the T helper cell response leads to two things. One is the B lymphocytes are uh, uh, stimulated to produce uh, antibodies, uh, specifically to self antigens that is auto antibodies are produced. They also activate other lymphocytes as well as macrophages. So, they produce cytokines and these cytokines are responsible for the tissue destruction, the inflammation etcetera that has been noticed. So, both the auto antibodies uh, producing immune complexes as well as the inflammation induced by the cytokines give rise to morphological changes in the joint. 50 percent of these cases are inherited. Now, it has been seen that environmental factors and these genetic factors that is specifically to class 2 HLA-DR4 are responsible for uh, perseverance of this disease and progression of the disease as well as advancement of the morphological changes. So, it is more severe in these patients in whom there is a hereditary factor associated. So, what happens exactly in this? Now, as I said earlier, it is an autoimmune response secondary to CD4 T helper cell uh, uh, activation. So, in this uh, the T helper cell acts in three ways. Now, along with that macrophage is also activated. Now, T helper cell there is a TH1 cell that will secrete certain enzymes specifically interferon gamma which causes macrophages and synovial cell activation. The macrophage in turn will release interleukin 1 and the most important uh, uh, cytokine so far released in rheumatoid arthritis which is tumor necrosis factor. These two cause uh, uh, your synovial protease to be activated and therefore, cartilage destruction. Activated T cell of any type will in turn uh, give rise to rankle activation and this rankle activation as we know is responsible for osteoclast activation and therefore, bone resorption. T helper 17 cell that will release interleukin 17 and these will give rise to activation of neutrophils and monocytes. So, as we see almost all the cells uh, within the joint space that is the uh, few WBCs which are there will be proliferating as well as will get activated. Uh, similarly, osteoclast activation is there and protease activation is there. So, all these in turn give rise to an inflammatory response within the joint space and cartilage destruction as well as bone resorption. Okay. The rheumatoid arthritis uh, pathogenesis besides the T helper cell response, uh, the autoantibodies also have um, an important uh, 
part in this uh, morphological changes that occur. So, what happens? In the synovium, uh, there are very few lymphocytes normally, but in case of rheumatoid arthritis due to activation of these lymphocytes, they form lymphoid follicles and within these lymphoid follicles are germinal centers because they are activated and these in turn uh, progress to formation of plasma cells and these plasma cells release autoantibodies specifically anti citrullinated uh, peptide autoantibodies to citrullinated peptides. So, let us have a look at where these citrullinated peptides are there. So, what are these citrullinated peptides? Citrullinated peptides are modified epitopes uh, produced by substitution of arginine for citrulline in certain people who have this predisposition and within the synovium this happens in type 2 collagen, then fibrinogen, vimentin and alpha enolase. It has been noted as earlier mentioned that uh, uh, genetic susceptibility is seen in 50 percent of these uh, patients and this is associated with a HLA-DR4 allele which is seen in uh, ACPA positive rheumatoid arthritis. Now, what happens here is that uh, a citrullinated peptide is seen in a protein known as vinculin which is similar to one which is presented by HLA-DR4 but seen in microbes. So, this may be a response to that the ACPA production may be a response to that. It has also been noted that ACPAs are responsible for disease perseverance in rheumatoid arthritis. What is rheumatoid factor? Now, rheumatoid factor is an uh, a uh, combination of IgM and IgG antibodies which bind to the FC portion of IgG and this is seen 80 percent of these patients and seen to be deposited as an immune complex within the joints. They may be seen however in other diseases also. Environmental factors may also be responsible for uh, ACPA production and these include uh, viruses uh, or other microbes which can uh, uh, have epitopes similar to citrulline, then smoking and infection. Smoking and infection causes uh, citrullination of self antigens. So, this in turn will cause CCPs to be produced. So, before we proceed, we will just summarize the pathogenesis of rheumatoid arthritis. So, in the presence of susceptibility genes uh, that is like HLA-DR4, etcetera and others, there is a failure of tolerance and unregulated lymphocyte activation. Besides that, environmental factors as I said infection and smoking, these cause enzymatic modification that is citrullination of certain peptides. So, these in turn will cause T and B cell response to self antigen to be produced. So, this includes TH17, TH1 as well as plasma cell uh, activation and macrophage activation which uh, this plasma cell activation will release uh, autoantibodies. So, lymphocytes, antibodies and immune complexes will enter the joints and uh, these in turn uh, will activate fibroblasts, chondrocytes and synovial cells through cytokine production and these will be proliferation, proliferating as well as release further cytokines which which in turn cause uh, damage to the joint as well as granulation tissue production which will be explained later and this granulation tissue uh, re leads to panis formation. Finally, there is destruction of bone and cartilage. So, that uh, in turn is how all these causes will give rise to the uh, morphological changes in joints in rheumatoid arthritis. So, grossly how does it look? The sites normally involved are the small joints of uh, hands and feet. Uh, the synovium here is thickened with the edema and it is hyperplastic also. The hyperplasia can be in the form of either uh, fine villi or it can be bulbous. There will be articular cartilage destruction and uh, subsequently there is granulation tissue formation uh, which gives rise to panis and this panis in turn subsequently uh, will uh, become fibrosed and, and then bony. So, this is fibrous ankylosis and bony ankylosis. So, now this is a picture here depicting a normal joint on one side and a rheumatoid joint on the other side. So, you can make out that the synovium here is thickened as well as there is a granulation tissue and panis covering that with the macrophages due neutrophils and autoantibodies as well as immune complexes within the joint space. Now, this can enter into the uh, bone also and uh, give rise to subchondral cyst which we will be seeing later. Microscopically, you see this uh, hyperplastic villi which are either bulbous or delicate. The synoviocytes will be instead of a single layer, there will be multiple layers of synoviocytes. So, synoviocyte hyperplasia may be seen. 
subcyanovially you will get extensive and dense inflammatory infiltrate predominantly of lymphocytes with the, uh, the pale areas in the center being the germinal centers as well as plasma cells, macrophages. Then in early cases there may even be neutrophils, there can be dendritic cells also. Now uh, these give rise to uh, these uh, hyperplastic lymphoid follicles in the subsynovial region which is classical for rheumatoid arthritis. Normally in the synovium uh, there are no villi, it is usually a flat lining and a single layer of epithelium uh, that is the synovocyte uh, lining and below that few scattered lymphocytes are normally seen. Vascularity is also increased because of the various cytokines which are produced there may be angiogenesis also. So, this is the hyper view of the same depicting the synoviocyte hyperplasia, the lymphocytes and plasma cells below that and the pale uh, macrophages as well as numerous blood vessels. Further changes include subchondral bone osteoclast activation and uh, this uh, uh, gives rise to subchondral cysts as we will see later. Inflamed uh, synovium meanwhile causes periarticular uh, erosion and the subchondral cysts. So, two things will be there subchondral bone osteoclast activation as well as periarticular erosion by the inflamed synovium. These two will give rise to subchondral cysts. Panus formation is noted as this is seen here. And this is nothing but edumatous synovium with granulation tissue and the WBCs along with activated fibroblasts. The synovial surface is also covered by an exudate uh, including uh, fibrin as well as pus that is cellular debris and neutrophils. Articular cartilage meanwhile undergoes destruction initially and this is uh, later uh, uh, supplanted by uh, fibrous ankylosis and subsequently by bony ankylosis and therefore it becomes a fusion of the joint space and therefore mobility will be restricted in these cases. Now, another aspect of rheumatoid arthritis is the extraarticular manifestation characterized by rheumatoid nodules. Now, this is not a common feature and it is seen rarely, but when it is seen, it is usually seen in the subcutis, especially in the upper limb, in forearms and elbows, occiput as well as in the lumbar sacral region. It is usually a painless firm round to oval nodule. And microscopically, it shows necrosis in the center, specifically fibrinoid necrosis and the peripheral lympho, uh, rim of lymphocytes, plasma cells and activated macrophages also called as epithelioid cells. So, basically looks like a necrotizing granuloma. Other manifestations uh, include specifically in the eye, uh, wherein you see uveitis as well as keratoconjunctivitis and leukocytoclastic vasculitis. Now, this affects the small and large arteries predominantly. Uh, location would be in the pleura, lung, pericardium, etc. And the same necrotizing uh, uh, effect will be there as we seen in the rheumatoid nodules, but over here it will be within the blood vessel as seen in the picture. So, you get necrotizing vasculitis and few giant cells may be there associated. This is the blood vessel with inflammation around it as well as within the wall. There can be necrosis, therefore fibrin may be there within the wall and inflammatory infiltrate will be seen. Clinically, uh, these necrotizing vasculitis are manifested as purpura nail bed infarction as well as ulcers. Now, laboratory findings in rheumatoid arthritis, serum shows a positivity for rheumatoid factor, then your ACPAs in 70 percent of the patients as well as ANAs and besides that uh, there is an increase in ESR and uh, C-reactive protein which is seen in most chronic conditions. So, moving on to the findings uh, in uh, synovial fluid analysis, early stage there are uh, mostly neutrophils are seen, in the later stages it is um, um, lymphocytes. The WBC count is characteristically more than 2000 per microliter, mucin is also seen in these cases as well as an increase in protein, rheumatoid factor can be seen sometimes and if it is there it is usually a sign of aggressive disorder. Certain criteria are followed to diagnose rheumatoid arthritis. The 2010 rheumatoid arthritis classification is what is currently being followed, uh, which was uh, uh, the ACR ULAR classification criteria. So, the target population is patient who has at least one joint with definite clinical synovitis including swelling with the synovitis is not better explained by another disease. And for these uh, uh, patients, the classification criteria 
or is a score based algorithm you have to add all the scores from categories a to d a score of more than 6 or equal to 6 within a total of 10 is needed for classification of a patient as having definite rheumatoid arthritis so what are these now uh, a category is joint involvement one large joint is given 0 points uh, 2 to 10 large joints is 1 point 1 to 3 small joints with or without involvement of large joint is given as 2 points, 4 to 10 small joints with or without involvement of large joints is given 3 points, more than 10 joints at least one of them a smaller joint is given 5 points. Serology at least one test result is needed for classification, negative rheumatoid factor and negative ACPA is 0, low positive rheumatoid factor or low positive ACPA is 2 points, high positive rheumatoid factor or high positive ACPA is 3 points. Category C is acute phase reactants, at least one test result is needed, uh, normal CRP and normal ESR is given 0, abnormal CRP or abnormal ESR is 1. Next is the last category D which is duration of symptoms, less than 6 weeks is 0 points, more than or equal to 6 weeks is 1 point. So, after these uh, uh, categories are uh, checked then uh, based on the algorithm uh, score is given, then if it is more than or equal to 6 the patient is said to have definite rheumatoid arthritis. So, clinically how do these patients present? General symptoms include malaise, fatigue, muscle pain and weakness. The joints involved are tender, warm and swollen. Most often it is the small joints of hands that is the uh, metacarpophalangeal joints and proximal interphalangeal joints which are involved. Uh, feet are also the similar joints which are involved and it is usually symmetrical. Later larger joints. Uh, uh, that is in the lower limbs it is ankle followed by knee whereas in the upper limbs it is wrist followed by elbow which are involved. So, remember that the small joints in the hands and feet are characteristically involved in rheumatoid arthritis initially. And uh, another uh, aspect of which is important is that this activity will not reduce early morning stiffness. Early morning stiffness is seen in uh, osteoarthritis also, but in rheumatoid arthritis the difference is that uh, the early morning stiffness will not disappear uh, like in other conditions. Joint involvement which is seen is continuous with waxing and waning. There is an increasing enlargement as uh, the disease progresses with reducing range of movement with increased uh, disease. Acute onset rheumatoid arthritis is uh, also there and this is over days which is quite severe and in this case not one joint but multiple joints are involved uh, at the same time. The few cases of uh, rheumatoid arthritis are known to regress or stabilize. This accounts for only about 10 percent of the cases, but most of them it is progressive with waxing and waning of the disease. So, what are the other features uh, associated with the rheumatoid arthritis? What happens in the hands, uh, hands uh, and uh, the knees, etcetera? That is what we are going to see now. So, in the hand the inflammation will extend to involve the ligaments, the tendon as well as the skeletal muscle and it gives rise to certain deformities and these deformities are in wrist there is radial deviation, fingers show ulnar deviation, flexion extension deformity is there, swan neck or boutonniere deformity is also seen. These are in the fingers. Radiological features as depicted in the picture include decreased joint space, especially radiocarpal, distal radio ulnar as well as metacarpophalangeal joint space. Periarticular osteopenia is seen, then ulnar subluxation, drift at the wrist and metacarpophalangeal joints and articular cartilage destruction. Besides that decreased medial, lateral and patellofemoral joint space is seen in the knees, periarticular osteopenia as seen here, then genuvarum in this case, but at times it can even be genuvalgum deformity also, knee joint subluxation is also possible. Effusion in joint space, whichever joint is involved there is definitely an effusion that is why it appears enlarged along with the inflammation of the synovium. So, these two are responsible for the enlargement of the uh, joint as seen clinically. So, therapeutic uh, uh, aspect of rheumatoid arthritis, it aims at reduction of the pain, 
the inflammation and joint in destruction in the involved joint. So, how do they go about this? So, initially it is corticosteroids then it is followed by immunosuppressants more specifically methotrexate. Right now uh, uh, clinical uh, trials are uh, ongoing for uh, TNF antagonist usage in rheumatoid arthritis. So, with this we uh, uh, come to the end of this session on pathological aspects of rheumatoid arthritis. So, before we conclude let us summarize what we have learnt in this session. So, rheumatoid arthritis is a chronic autoimmune disorder specifically involving initially at least the small joints of hands and feet usually seen in adult females more often and they are HLA-DR4 susceptible. There is a progressive symmetrical joint involvement with waxing and waning. CD4 positive T lymphocytes are the culprits in the in, uh, as an initiating response for this autoimmune uh, uh, disease. ACPAs are seen to citrullinated peptides in the synovium and resident cells in the joints. Morphologically, the synovium is thickened edematous with synovial proliferation and hyperplasia which can be villus or bulbous. Underlying the synovium in the subsynovial region, you will see lymphoid follicles uh, which are hyperplastic, then plasma cells and then over the synovium is a panus which will subsequently undergo um, fibrosis and bony ankylosis. Extra articular manifestations include rheumatoid nodules, vasculitis, ocular manifestations, then lung lesions, etc. And radiologically, you will see in the joint involved loss of joint space, osteopenia, and bone erosions. Laboratory investigations when done will show rheumatoid factor positivity along with the positivity for CCPs that is citrullinated peptides as well as antibodies to that that is ACPA along with uh, increased uh, acute phase reactants including uh, your uh, C-reactive protein ESR is also elevated in these conditions. So, with that we conclude this session on rheumatoid arthritis. Thank you for listening in attentively. Thank you. Have a good day.